Okay, so the other day we kind of started shaping this around the lock just a little bit. We want to leave as much meat around the wrist for now as we can, just for extra support. And uh, next step, we're going to inlet the butt plate. So I actually transitioned this butt plate from a uh, Fowler style into a uh, into a rifle style. Uh, it's steel, but typically in the 18th century it was all brass. It was about 95% of all guns were, were uh, furnished in brass. In this case we're going to use steel and uh, it'll have a good look to it. But what you do is you put it up here and, uh, and you just try to find your center mark. to see what it looks like first before I go any any further. It's gonna look pretty good, but our center line coming down through here that we drew at the beginning, I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna hold up here at the center of the tang, and then I'm gonna come off of my center line about 3 16 of an inch or so on the lock side. So if it's a left-handed, you wanna go on the other side of your line. So what this is, is it's, uh, it's called cast off. And cast off, will make it feel a lot more comfortable against the side of your face when you're shooting. It'll hold a lot more comfortably. And so that way uh, your, your head and your cheek actually fits naturally to it and you're not leaning over it so much. So we're gonna off center the butt plate just a little bit. What it's gonna cause is the butt plate's gonna wanna start tilting this way just a little bit just because we're not square anymore when we use this line. So I'm actually gonna have to take more wood off of this edge than this side over here when I'm inletting it. So I'm gonna scoot the butt plate over just a little bit and try to center it up the best I can. And that looks pretty good right there. So next step is I'm gonna, I'm gonna trace a line right across the top here. All you wanna do is you wanna take off um, around the bend for right now. You don't wanna take off any out front yet because you don't know if that's exactly where it's gonna be just yet. You just want to worry about taking it off these bends right here so that way your butt plate sits down flat. So there we have it marked. All right, so now I'm going to come in with a uh, chisel and my mallet here and I'm just going to start scoring it just a little bit. Uh, you don't want to go too deep here. Flat side goes out. Let me scoot that forward just a little bit because it's bouncing a lot. If you catch it bouncing then you can just clamp it right here on the wrist and uh, or even on the butt itself just to get rid of all that unnecessary play all right and then here I'm just going to use hand pressure because we're right on that edge and you don't want to chip that off it's going to come off eventually but for right now you just don't want to take a big old chip out of there because then you could you could actually notice that chip if it goes too deep all right, so now I'm going to take this bit of wood out of there. A lot of these early styles just made a 90 degree turn. And if you look at uh, a lot of smooth bores like, uh, like trade guns and, and your simpler guns like trade guns and fowlers, they, um, a lot of them literally just took a piece of sheet brass and, um, and they just rolled it at a 90 degree. And it just made a 90 degree sharp turn at the top of the at the top of the uh, stock here and uh, so they were just very simply put together and then others were rounded like this one's going to be and check it pretty often so we're already starting to seat down pretty good I'm going to take a little more off back here you don't want to go too deep uh, because you're you think that it might that it might be fitting good but uh, when you file these ears off um, to where they need to be, you'll actually have a gap in between the, your stock and your butt plate. So just take a little bit of wood off at a time and check it. So there, we're starting to fit up pretty dang good. Actually, looks like I could take off a little more. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and trace the top. 
And once again, to have a good tight fit, you just want to you want to have a good sharp pencil to get a good crisp line. And um, and you also want to stay on the insides of your line whenever you trace this thing out because if you go right on your line, your chisel will pry that wood out. And also, your pencil might have not have been sharp enough. And uh, then you'll have a gap in between your stock and butt plate. When you get close to that edge, if you're using a mallet, just do really teeny tiny taps. Because that will split off of there if you're not careful. Alright, so now we're going to start taking some wood off in here. I like using a mallet for this for the most part, just because it, it seems like I can control it a little bit better. But it's... Uh, um, a lot of guys just will use their hands, hand pressure, and that's absolutely fine to do as well. It's really just whatever you're most comfortable with. I've just found when I'm using my hands, sometimes my chisel will slip and I'll actually put a gouge in the back side where I'm not supposed to. When you're going with your flat side down on your chisel, you want to be careful because it'll it wants to naturally dig. And so just make sure you're not digging too deep. So we got a little gap here. And same thing on the other side. So what I'm going to do is take a little more wood off the, the roll here. Literally just little bitty, teeny tiny bits at a time. You don't want to get in a hurry. I'm getting close. Alright, so uh, so on this on this butt plate. I left it a little bit high right here. Um, I cut the stock down um, before I even started inletting it, and uh, but I left the butt plate just a little bit high because I'm actually going to add a uh, comb decorative piece uh, branching off of this. And so what I'm going to end up doing is is uh, beveling uh, the butt plate, and then I'll bevel the the comb piece as well, so that way they fit into each other. And then I'll inlet the comb piece as well, just kind of as a design. Uh, coming through here so but this still needs a uh, screw in it so what I'm going to do is you can just eyeball it and in fact in my opinion it looks better if you do eyeball it because it make it makes it look more like it was uh, actually hand done instead of uh, instead of like a machine doing it um, so I'm gonna put a punch mark right there and um, Yeah, it looks good. All right, I'm gonna put a punch mark there, and then make sure that's fitted up good still. And then I'm gonna come on the back side, and you don't want to go, you don't want to go down here. I've seen guys, uh, even I when I first started building, I actually put the screw right here uh, a couple times, and you don't want to do that just because you're getting too close uh, to your heel down here, and. Um, and so what it can do is it can split out your bottom right there. Um, so I like to come up about a third of the way or so from the bottom. Um, and so you could actually go about right there. You just don't want to go so high that you're going to be getting in. If you're, if you're putting a patch box on here, you don't want to go any higher um, than that just because um, all this wood here is going to be taken out. There's going to be a hole in your stock here. For your patch box so you want to go low enough where this screw is going to miss your your patch box but you want to go high enough to where it still looks good and it's close to about a third of the way up all right so i'm going to put a punch here all right and now i'm going to grab a drill bit and we're going to we're going to drill these holes all right so after you get that hole drilled you want to countersink it What I like to do is leave the leave the countersink just a little bit smaller than the head of the screw. And so what that allows you to do is uh, when this screw drops in here, see it's already sitting pretty close. But what I'll do is when you start threading uh, threading this screw into the wood there, you'll leave it stick you'll leave that screw sticking up just a little bit and file that notch a little deeper. And uh, and so that way you can get your turn screw on there easier. Uh, today we call them screwdrivers, but in the 18th century they called them turn screws. Um, and uh, so that way when you screw it in, then you can file this off flush and you still have a notch to get a hold of with your turn screw if you're wanting to take your butt plate off. All right, so when your butt plate's on here, 
I like to take a, a little grill here. They're just hand forged, uh, hand forged little drills is what they are. I'll drill this thing. I'm gonna put a little bit of wax on it, and uh, the wax just kind of helps it helps it guide in there without uh, without binding up too bad. And you want to do the same thing on your screw heads or your screws as well. So on this one, I'm actually gonna go not in the dead center of that hole. I'm actually gonna scoot it forward of center just a teeny tiny bit. And what that does is that puts pressure towards the front of that hole so that way it holds your butt plate up tight to the front there. And then on the bottom hole, you want to do the opposite. You want to put your you want to put your hole just off center towards the bottom of the hole. Alright, I'm gonna turn this. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and put this screw in here. Put some wax on it. And if you're having trouble getting the screw in and it's really, really tight, then back that thing out and uh, drill a pilot hole. Uh, drill your drill your hole a little bit deeper because it's man, you'll break that screw off in there, and then you got you got some problems. All right, so I'm gonna leave it sticking up about like that, and I'm gonna file that notch a little bit deeper. One of the most common sounds you would hear in a 18th century gun shop would have been your your files there was there was constantly file work going on it was a lot of times it would have been the apprentice working on something and the uh the master he would be building a gun and the apprentice would be uh building parts if he if he knew how at that time and he would he would build the parts and and be shining them up and doing a lot of file work and there's some builders like uh, like Isaac Haynes. He was a very well-known gun builder, the 18th century, and he uh, he only apprenticed for a few years before before he got turned loose and he was uh, building guns on his own just because he had a natural gift for it. He was one of the few one of the few builders that had a natural gift to where he he only worked I think four years as an apprentice before he started building guns on his own for a living. All right. All right, so we're gonna start relieving the stock now of all its excess wood. So I, I usually start back here, and uh, I start on the cheap piece side, just because it's uh, there's gonna be a, more wood left on the cheap piece side than there will be on the lock side. And so if you start on cheap piece side, then that way when you're doing the lock side, you still got more meat over here as support. So that way it's just less chance of your stock splitting or breaking on you. On cheek pieces, they were they were only about a, a quarter inch tall in the front and about five sixteenths tall in the in the rear. They kind of tapered towards the front, and generally they went uh they went about four inches or so three well not even four inches about about three three and a half inches from the from the butt here is usually about where they started. Um, so I'm going to cheat it forward. About three and a quarter is where I'm going to start my cheap piece at on this rifle, and uh, and then they were only about two and a half to three inches long, generally. So let's put it here at three. So there's the three. So there's where the cheap piece will go. Um, so up and down, that really just depends on the customer, uh, on how it how it fits him or her, and. Uh, so I'm actually going to leave. I'm going to leave the cheek piece a little long for now, um, just so that gives me a little bit of play room. I can always take more off if I need to. The cheek piece they generally didn't run straight with the bottom. They generally kind of tapered away from it. If you look at pictures of originals, they were they were at a slight taper going away from the bottom. So we'll bring it in here like this, and then they were always wider in the back. I shouldn't say always. They weren't always wider in the back, but. We're going to come up here. So that's basically our layout for our cheek piece of where it's going to go. So now we're just going to continue chiseling on and, and I'm going to leave this part sticking up. And then we'll relieve around it as we go. When you're cutting these, uh, cutting the stock down, I like to leave about an eighth inch above the butt plate here, 
as I go. And that just kind of gives me a little extra room for carving. Most carvings in the uh, 18th century were very, very shallow. A lot of them, they would, they would actually get the stock down to finish and then relieve the wood around their carving and just kind of feather it back out to where it all looks like it's, it's 3D, but it's actually the same height as it is about two inches away from the carving. I'm gonna leave about an eighth inch sticking up here just to kind of give me a little bit more of a height out of my carving. Then I can always take more down if I need to. So when I was beating that butt plate in, I took a gouge out of the toe right here, and uh, that was a sure dang it. I, that kind of stuff makes me sick, but it, it sure happens. But So to fix that, uh, you could take that piece and save it and glue it back and even drive a little pin in it to hold it. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out a, a, a design toe piece and uh and then let it in here and it'll hide that and also it'll it'll protect that and it'll it'll keep it from chipping in the future <laughs> you get the butt pretty well shaped for the most part uh, I've still got quite a bit of wood to take off but it's it's pretty good for now so the next step I'm gonna do is start shaping the forestock and getting the majority of the wood knocked off of it what I like to do is uh, I bought this little plane at Harbor Freight and it's just your little cheapo you can buy like a set of three of them I think for like five or five to seven dollars something like that they're really cheap but they work perfect for this what I like about them too is you can lay them up here on the on the edge and you can start you can start working this and when you take this wood off the plane will actually lay against your barrel eventually and it won't let you go any deeper that's really good because it kind of stops you where you need to stop and then you can take the rest of the stock down by hand with either if you're using sandpaper or scrapers whatever uh, or a little bitty files you can you can take down that the rest of that wood this will get it down pretty dang close to where i want it to be but not quite close enough i like to take mine down to where they're almost just paper thin Once you have that knocked down pretty close, um, then you can take a file and start shaping your, the belly of the stock. I'm going to leave a little excess wood around here uh, just for carving. Uh, so that way when I relieve this around the lock, uh, I'll have a little bit of meat there to work with. Uh, don't roll over this edge with it. These big teeth will catch on that wood and it'll tear it. And then you'll have a rip along your edge here. Just use your, uh, your big rasp for um, big, big bulks of wood. Don't get it close to the edge like this. When you do come over here to the edge, you can get one of these just, uh, I use a cheap little rasp. Once again, you can buy these at Harbor Freight or Lowe's, wherever. And they're just cheap little rasps, but I use them for here uh, just because if you hit the barrel, or something like that and it ruins this file you're only out just a couple bucks and not 50 or 60 for a good a good rasp when you're rasping right here um, this is kind of an awkward place and uh, I struggled with it for quite a while getting it right and I think a lot of builders do but when you take this down you want to leave 
you want to leave a little bit of flat uh, wood on here just as support so that way when you inlet your entry thimble here you've got some wood to take off right here to make it sit in there better and it just helps it support just a little bit better the others you can pretty well take it down to a knife edge uh, but here kind of leave a little land right here and then we'll come back and we'll shape this later uh, when the stock's almost completely shaped <laughs> I think that's, I think I'm going to call it good for today, man. <laughs>